This is a HeadGum Podcast. All right, let's play a little word association. I'll say a word. You tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. I'll time you. Sage. Wisdom. Le- leaves. Uh, good. That's two things, but okay. Uh, now, minerals. Rock. Minerals. Don't just repeat minerals back to me. Also, that's two words again. Right. Sorry. Uh, Dove Men Plus Care has developed a range of men's body washes, bars, shampoo, deodorants, and antiperspirants inspired by nature's refreshers like minerals and sage. They call it Dove Men Plus Care Elements. So replenish your skin with minerals. Refresh your body with a fresh fragrance of sage. Noble, subtle, clean, full of wisdom, like a squeaky clean... Lion or an owl or something. Uh, sure. Try Dove Men Plus Care Elements, minerals, and sage products and get a boost of freshness that leaves you renewed. Visit DoveMenCare.com to find out more. Pete and that was Safari You and Advice Podcast. Email in with any questions that you might want to ask. We got Jake, Josh, the Game Boy, Noah, and Amir. Kobe's in the back, but you never can hear. Yes, dude. They have special guests, but not all the time. Stories of John Wolf and it's not quite crime. They always start and end with fan made songs. Sometimes things get too real, turn down the podcast, Mom. Very soon. We'll tell you, seize the cheese and hope that things turn out all right. Will we ever find out how Jake lost his virginity? Or do we have to see them live? Let's Get on with it, no further ado. The show starts now. If I were you, yeah. Well, there's three more verses. Okay, Tim, punk rocky. <laughs> What'd you think, Tim? That was great. <laughs> the guy who chimed in, oh, yeah, like halfway through, yeah, kind of sounded like Jake. Oh, I wonder if they Did just they took an audio? oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's pretty good. My oh, yeah, kind of sounds like Dave because I stole it from him. Yeah, we have a friend, but named he Dave. stole it from uh. Macho Man Randy Savage, I think. Everybody steals. Let's well, talk Macho about Man it. didn't say it, steal it from anyone. <laughs> oh, he made it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. He made it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, the Kool-Aid e- guy. Everybody steals from Macho Man is what I meant to say. Right, right, right. Uh, that guy, uh, his name is Bryce Linus. He's been putting up a cover song every week this year in alphabetical order on his YouTube channel. So it's Bryce, B-R-Y-C-E, Linus, L-Y-N-A-S. Was that a cover song? Uh, not that I know of. <laughs> it will be soon. <laughs> so People are going to be covering that. Oh, yeah. So this will be the original source material for other covers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. TM, Bryce Linus. I love that. Uh, Tim Baltz in the house. Yo. Guest. First time guest on our show. Yeah. Crazy, right? What took us so long? And I still haven't seen the pilot I was in. That's right. We know Tim because he was oh, in shit. our True TV pilot. That we was- have it. Pass. Yeah, we, can show I know. It to you. we go through this every time I see <laughs> you. You want to watch it after <laughs> you have it? No, I don't have time. We go through this every time I see you too. <laughs> I can't stress how not interested I am in seeing it. Uh, Tim, yeah, you. We basically auditioned people for this specific role, and as soon as we saw Tim, we're like, "That's the guy." Hired him look right this, on the spot. Right this the dumpy, spot. uptight nerd. Yeah, <laughs> that was the part. <laughs> Uh, but now you got your own shit going on, uh, your show on CISO. Yeah, I'm, I'm mostly CISO's bad boy this, these days. Oh, yeah, because yeah. you're on Bajillion Dollar Properties. Yeah, which we finished seasons three and four. Uh, shot three, two seasons at once? Yeah, well, pretty much. We How shot many the episodes first are in a season of that? Eight. No shit. Well, no, nine in the first two. And then we shot the first two over the course of two months at the end of 2015, beginning of 2016. And then they ordered two more seasons, which they didn't even tell their fans about until until we were done filming season three and four. Wow. And they're like, by the way, season three. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say season four. <laughs> that's okay. You're, CISO, you're CISO's bad boy. Yeah, that's right. I break all their rules. <laughs> you're fired, man. <laughs> they know it too. Sometimes they create like bullshit rules just because they know I'm going to break them. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your image up. <laughs> Classic bad boy. CISO's and, bad boy is anybody else's good boy. That's true. That's I, how I, good they are. Oh, God. I'm willing to be anybody's good boy. <laughs> <laughs> your, your persona screams good boy, though. It yeah. does. You're not rarely a bad boy, right? Uh, no. Are you a bad little boy, Tim? <laughs> I'm a bad little boy. <laughs> Have you ever gotten in trouble? Uh, yeah, I take spankings pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> I administer them well, too. Actually, I, I have a good story about my last spanking. Okay. The last spanking I ever got. I was way... I mean, like, eight years went in between, like, my 
second to last spanking and my last spanking. I was like, uh, my second to last spanking was at like age three. You outgrew this. <laughs> it's, yeah. So then by 11, you were, it shouldn't have happened. Yeah. It's so, almost erotic. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, it was my dad who spanked me. So no, it was erotic for neither of us. Maybe for you. you like this? I'm like excited thinking about it. You like thinking about my dad spanking 11 year old? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so we were, my mom is French. I don't know if you guys knew this. Wait, wait, wait. You knew oui. this. No. She's from the north of France. So when we were kids, I grew up an hour outside of Chicago, and we would go, my grandparents would help uh, travel, fly us back, and we'd go stay in the north uh, for, for like two weeks. And then we would probably spend about 10 days going to one other place in the country, um, like the, you know, the northeast near Alsace or, you know, the middle of the country. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you got to say Yeah. <laughs> So one year, oh way, <laughs> oh way, <laughs> that's great actually. Sail away, sail <laughs> away, <laughs> oh way. I want to spank you now. <laughs> In yeah. the erotic way. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the erotic this guy, way. This guy's always looked at me that way, which, by the way, is part of the reason why my nickname for you is Daddy. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that so, was, oh man all right, all right. so, so finish the spanking so we're in that we're in the alps we're in this tiny town of like 200 people and um and there are these uh parasailers that are coming down off the mountain landing in this little mountain town in this big field and wow. this field's like two football fields long right huge and we're walking down this gravel road really huge the only way it could be bigger is if it was three football fields long, <laughs> which has never not. happened no, or two and a half <laughs> Yeah, has that happened? <laughs> <laughs> so this one's two foot. This guy, this guy is landing like he's landing like a hundred yards away from me. All right, yeah. I'm eleven. I pick up a piece of gravel and I throw it in his general direction. His general direction, right? Trying to hit him, or like you're just having fun, well, seeing how far you can throw. Yeah, gravel. but I'm eleven. You right. know, still now I can't throw anything a hundred yards. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Not even John Elway with a vortex football could do that. No. Oh my God, John Elway. <laughs> 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 it hit the stands. Oh, uh, never mind. It's just Brett Favre. <laughs> Next. Um, and my dad comes. Uh, so I, I come up like 75 yards short <laughs> of hitting this parasailer, right? Of course. Embarrassingly short. And to the point where one would think from the outside, he wasn't even trying to hit this guy. He was just throwing a piece of gravel Towards. in the direction of this parasailer. Yeah. My dad comes up behind me and spanks me on the butt. Oh, like instant spank. Not Inst- like, I'm going to punish you later. No, like instant spank. And I think he was mad about other stuff. I never got to the bottom of it. <laughs> he was going through some shit with my mom. He got to the bottom of you, though. Quick spank. Got to my bottom. And I turn around and I look at him like, excuse me, sir. Like, how dare you? <laughs> yeah. And the whole time he like spent the next like half of the day mad at me. My mom and my sister went on this hike that I couldn't go on because I was grounded or something. And he sat there like fuming and, and I wasn't even mad. I just kind of stared at him like, why are you upset? <laughs> yeah, if you can like question the rationale for this banking, you're too old. That yeah. was that was the, the basis of your character shrink. It's like trying to get to the bottom of this guy, which happened to be your father. Yeah. Which why is, are you mad? There's a ton of spanking and shrink. <laughs> shrink is the show that's coming out March 16th on CISO. Holy shit, that's soon. Yeah. Uh, all right, we'll Which, talk about that uh, in great, great depth later. But for now, we have to answer some questions. We It's oh, usually just me and for Jake. a shrink, actually. Mm. Oh, yeah. You play a psychologist, psychiatrist? I play one on a streaming platform, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> these the are... Boy. Upset platform. <laughs> Tim, as I'm sure you know, these are real emails from real people. Wow. Uh, people will email us. Uh, they're they're in sticky situations. Is this Tim's first time on our show? It yeah. is. Wow. I mean, I've listened to it. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> wow, nice twins. <laughs> uh, we haven't even said the name of the show. This is If I Were You. Uh, and it's a device <laughs> podcast. Sometimes just me and Jake. Sometimes we have a friend. Today we have Tim Baltz in the house. Vortex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Get in the chopper. <laughs> Stop <laughs> shooting me. <laughs> um, anyway, these are real emails Dylan, from real you people. you son of a bitch. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> uh, another Schwarzenegger quote. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, all right. So this is from a guy. We just got to give him a fake name if you got one. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Chad Buns. <laughs> <laughs> Chad Buns. Chad Buns writes... I'm a freshman in college, and my girlfriend of one year now moved to Alabama to go to school there, while I live in a different state. 
Our relationship has been going strong until recently. She would come back during holidays, and we would spend a lot of time together, and I would visit her when I'd find the time to fly down there. However, a couple weeks ago, she told me she has feelings for someone in Alabama. I was already planning to fly down there for her birthday, and when I visited, she cried the entire time talking about how conflicted she was and saying she didn't want to break up with me. For lunch on her birthday, she invited her new crush, and the douchebag made fun of me the entire time. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> when he left, when he left, Dave, all I want for my birthday <laughs> is to have lunch with my crush and you. <laughs> As he derides him the entire time. When he left, when we left, he texted her all night, comparing the situation to a cliche love triangle and trying to get her to leave me while I was still there. <laughs> I'm close with her family. I really like her, and I didn't break up with her while I was there. Now I'm back home, and I'm wondering if I should try to keep this relationship going until summer when she can come back. Or if I should preemptively end it so as to not let her break up with me. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. Love, Chad Buns. Wow. I hope his name's not really Chad Buns. Did you guess it? Did he guess it? Is it Chad Buns? It's close. It's Chard (laughs) Bounet. Chard Bounet. Swiss Chard Buns. Uh, I, I I was in a situation similar to this in college, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. I had a long-distance relationship for two, man, I don't, three, two and a half years. Where were you? Where was she? I was in Chicago at my college, Loyola, uh-huh. and she was, well, I was a little older. Uh, <laughs> she was in kindergarten <laughs> at the time, <laughs> which doesn't sound very hot. Now it matches up because <laughs> she's legal. Uh, no, now she, she's in college, actually. <laughs> We had a long temporal distance, so the time of our lives was also a long distance. Anyway, you are under arrest. <laughs> uh, where was she? She was in uh, she was in my hometown, which is an hour southwest. She's, Joliet, Illinois. Yes, nice. She was I, two years younger than me. I made a Joliet joke in Chicago at a Chicago show that went over really well. I don't yeah. know if I ever told you that. I kept making Joliet references, and people loved it. Really? Was the ta- does the town of is it like a, a whipping boy? Is it? oft ridiculed yes okay it's not shelbyville <laughs> of, by any of means. springfield you know the, joliet has a lot of pride and it is an all-american city and, and it's a it's a great place to come from but yeah it's so it's just outside the suburbs yeah. the suburbs have basically grown to meet joliet and joliet has grown too now it's about 140 150,000 people but uh-huh. when i was growing up it was like 80 90,000 people wow and it was a an old steel mill town that bottomed out and then <laughs> Spent like 15 years just really sadly waiting for Riverboat <laughs> Casinos to show up. Up the stream. Yeah. Nothing today, guy looking through <laughs> binoculars. I guess we'll have to keep playing dice. <laughs> yeah, it's a whipping boy. Um, so for the first two years, no, for the first year, year and a half, she was there. Then she went to college in southern Illinois, and that was like five hours away. The Salukis? Ooh. Yes, Southern Illinois University. Uh, nice poll. And... Um, and she was there for a year, so we did that for a year. And then she transferred to a college in Chicago, and that was the last, like, six months that we were together. So do you recommend these long-distance relationships? They're tough. I mean, if I were to just give a real quick answer to this guy, I would say if if separation is probably making it hard for both of you, it sounds like it's it's making it hard for her in the sense that she's falling for a douchebag. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which I... Who show who who would take this invitation and be like, yeah, I'll go to lunch with you and your boyfriend, <laughs> as long as I get to make fun of the little hey, you little you little pencil dick turd. <laughs> I'm a fuck your girlfriend. Yeah, he's from Alabama too. You know he's from Alabama. Roll Tide, War Eagle, <laughs> motherfucker. Hell yeah, motherfucker. War damn eagle. Roll fucking Tide. Uh, I I mean, look, you got a couple options. One, you stick it out. She's probably gonna break up with you. Two, you break up with her just to cut it off because you got bad feelings about this. But really, look, break it off. Then she's going to go be with this douchebag. And yeah. she's either a, a I person going to do that anyway. She's either a person who deserves a douchebag or she's going to be with the douchebag and realizes that she fucked up and come back to you. Yeah, but I don't even want this. I don't even, I wouldn't even want her back. I think what she's doing is pretty bad. Why would she, if she's not. It's weird to admit feelings for someone and be like, but I don't want to break up. So it's like, so don't yeah. tell me about the feelings. Well, no, I've heard of people admitting feelings because they feel guilty. It's so and guilty like, that you, you just say, have, like, a crush I have a on crush someone? on this person. And, you know, and like, if you're an understanding uh, guy or gal, you're like, that's cool. Like, I, I like get those things too. But like, as long as you recognize that that's like fleeting and meaningless and what we have is more important, then we can like move on. But the fact that she's like, 
and I also want to invite him out with us. <laughs> I, want, yeah. I want to see this through. Like, yeah. So then it sounds like you're not, it's not necessarily like a, a harmless crush. It's a harmful crush. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would say any crush, don't tell me about it. If I'm in a relationship with someone, I won't tell you about my crushes. You don't tell me about your crushes. If they become debilitating crushes and crush us, then we'll deal with that. But for now, you don't have to tell me everyone that you have a crush on. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. I would rather not know. But I think there are, there are people that operate in different fashions. You know, there's one thing we might be overlooking is that this is some kind of kinky dog whistle this guy's not picking up. Oh. That they were trying to cuck this guy. (laughs) (laughs) Invites Sir Crush to lunch. He makes fun of him the whole time. And the guy's like, not into it. So I, I like a creepy dog whistle. Kinky yeah. dog whistle. Oh, kinky dog whistle. As a punk rock band name. <laughs> kinky dog whistle. We, yeah. I don't think it's that. I think this girl's being disrespectful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny that he's like, I want to break up with her before she breaks up with me. Like, that's his only reason. He just doesn't want her, her to do it first. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the like, last the, upper hand he'll ever have. But like, she there's plenty. She things. gave him a lot of reasons to break up with her. That, already yeah that aren't that aren't based on just like you know the humiliation of being dumped well i mean he's endured some humiliation already he's young though i mean he's in college yeah you know? i mean i i know that i stayed in that relationship because this girl at the time was was my type you know and so it, it was and i came from a hometown and and she was you know she was she was from my hometown really cool and outside the box and so that was great it was very intoxicating to me it was yeah. hard for me to see past our problems when to... you're when you're younger your tolerance for like uh oh. an, an unideal relationship is so insanely high oh it's crazy God. like i'll stick it out for three years and be miserable most of the time because it took me 19 years to get her i can't wait another 19 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and then when you get older your tolerance just gets my by the like it, it gets very very short and yeah. thin. And too so short yeah like, <laughs> my name uh, is too short <laughs> They, man, right now, I mean, my girlfriend and I, I was like, you know what, I'm thinking I'm going to have oatmeal for breakfast today. Mix it up, because usually we have breakfast tacos. <laughs> it's pretty elaborate, and it's good. Yeah. And it's a nice go-to every day. It starts the day off right. You Absolutely. have breakfast tacos every day? That's a goddamn treat. Five, probably five days a week. No wow. shit. You're spoiling yeah. yourself, Tim. I am. <laughs> I am. And my fat little face is proof. Um, <laughs> And then you go to oatmeal. And I go to oatmeal just to kind of change it up, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, I, I mean, I, I jam I jam it full of the good stuff. Yeah, of course. Bananas, sugar, nuts, what have you. Cinnamon. Dates, cinnamon. Oh, I cook dates. the cinnamon in. Wow. Good stuff. While I'm, while I'm cooking. You do it. almond milk? I do coconut milk. Very coconut good, man. Milk. Yeah. A little sweet, a little creamy. Ever made oatmeal tacos? <laughs> sick dude anyway my girl my girlfriend was like yeah i don't really like oatmeal in the mornings and i and i had this reaction like dude settle down don't read into this <laughs> which is so dumb but I, you know i'm getting yeah. older so it's so true so when do you like oatmeal I question or do everything. you not just like me Ever. <laughs> Meanwhile, this guy sat through an hour-long brunch with his girlfriend's crush berating him and then, like, laid in bed as they're texting all night. That's grounds for dismissal. Yeah. I think you should, if you love her, let her go and then find someone that lives near you. let her go regardless. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy for us to say, and so he should do it. The end. Um, all right. Let's. Uh, next question is from... <gasps> a guy. We have another <laughs> dude's name. We need your help again. Me? It's a high yeah. schooler. Ooh, a high schooler. All right. How about um, like Mike Mitchell? I like that. Classic. Yeah. Dude Just... eats oatmeal every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Mitchell's the name of the guy that bullied the kid in the last question. <laughs> <laughs> he took Chad Buns to task. Wait, your boyfriend's name is Chad Buns? <laughs> I gotta have brunch with you two. <laughs> Three oatmeals and watch this. <laughs> uh, there was a fight the other day at my high school. Not so much a fight as one guy just pounding on another. And I just sat there and watched it happen. I've been upset with myself ever since. What should I have done? Jump in and help the and help, or risk getting myself in trouble for beating up the first guy? <laughs> what would you have done if you were me? <laughs> So he's such a he's such a coward that he did nothing, but he also has the 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 self confidence to know if he jumped into the fight, he would kick the other guy's ass. Yeah, the first guy's ass at right. the very least. Okay. Do you ever see a fight in Joliet High? Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> it was raw. 
<laughs> I went to public schools. There were four active gangs. Really? Yeah. 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 Was it called Juliet High? Juliet Cent- there were two public schools, Juliet Central and Juliet West. I went to Juliet Central, which was on the east side, which is um, less, you can't even say affluent. Uh, there's less money on the east side. <laughs> um, and I, the school was about 2,500 people. And it was about a third white, a third black, a third Hispanic. Okay. Um, and so there, you know, there was always kind of tension. The weird thing was is that it was kind of an anti-breakfast club high school. Joliet West was more like a traditional breakfast club high school. You know, the same like kind of class structure uh-huh. within the high school. Whereas Central, where I went, if you thought you were cool, there were so many people just looked at you and ridiculed you. You, know, you, think, you're, you think you're cool? No one was In allowed any to way. Cool. There was no popular kids, they, all nerds. No, no, not like that at all. Just like people that were, they didn't buy into the cool stuff like that. It was, it was, it's just the dynamic of the town and specifically the dynamic of that high school was it, it because of the breakdown, I think demographically of the school, you weren't really, it was like, well, two thirds of the school is probably going to look at you like, what? What's your thing? Nobody so, cares. So how were their fights? Um, People tried to be cool. Probably. probably. I mean... <laughs> you, wait, you remember actually seeing a fist fight? Oh, yeah. I remember freshman year. So freshman year, I'm, I'm coming in at like 5 to 100 pounds. <laughs> Soaking dry. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember it was a four-story. <laughs> 5 it's this, it's this gorgeous um, <laughs> old building. It looks like Stateville, which is actually just outside of Joliet. Uh, it was built in 1904, I think. It's all marble. It's all like... Oh, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous old building. And... I remember walking up the steps and looking out into – there was like a, a T street that, that stopped near one of the big main doors. And I remember looking out, and I was just kind of like taking a pause, adjusting my backpack, and I saw this dude come out. One guy hands him a padlock. The guy puts it in his hand. Jesus. And just decks this dude in the back of the head, and the guy out cold immediately. Of course. And then, like, <laughs> my classroom happened to be one level up overlooking the same street. Holy and, shit. And, like, an ambulance comes up, gets this guy. Good Lord. Yeah. It, but then my sophomore year, we had a principal come in with a zero tolerance policy and totally cleaned it up. Wow. The Rudy Giuliani of high school principals. Because he's a racist. <laughs> yeah. And he dresses in drag for life. <laughs> Uh, yeah, would you do, would you, have you ever broken up a fight? I would never, especially in high school. Maybe now, seeing high schoolers fight, I would perhaps have the courage, depending on the size of the high schoolers. But I'm not the kind of guy that's about to break up a fight. Yeah, I I mean, if I had been in high school, I don't think physically I would have been of service. (laughs) You would have just been some sort of paper towel someone threw in the middle of this brawl. Well, by junior, senior year, I'd gotten into powerlifting because I was a varsity (laughs) athlete, so. Is that true? Yeah. Well, powerlifting. (laughs) Uh, soccer. No shit. Yeah. Powerlifting. What yeah. is like you were for soccer? You were like clean and jerking, <laughs> power <laughs> lifting. I hope people are googling my legs right now. I've never <laughs> cleaned and jerked at anything. Clean and jerk. <laughs> Wait, no. are you serious about being a soccer player? Yeah. And yeah. you were doing weightlifting. Any varsity athlete could get out of gym class, PE class, by going into powerlifting, which wow. was way easier. You didn't have to do anything, or you could just do whatever you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> we had a couple like you know psycho steroid heads that would just go nuts, uh, and awesome. you'd watch like records get broken every week. And Jesus, wow. yeah, it was fun. <laughs> but mostly, I ate my lunch during that period. <laughs> Oatmeal, <laughs> got jacked, ice cold. <laughs> would you break up a fight? Um, I was thinking during this question. That I, this is like I had an experience in New York where I was outside the subway, and I was watching like two two people get into a fight. And like a sort of a crowd was like forming around, and I, and I was like, I should, this shouldn't happen. Like I should break this up. But I was too. I was like, it, it felt like there was enough people that something was gonna like it was it was gonna get broken up, and then somebody sort of tried to break it up, and somebody else that was watching was like, no, let them handle it. Wow. And then like, but I just felt so uncomfortable, and I didn't do anything, and I just left, and that like ate away at me for a week or two, and. The next, like a couple weeks later, I saw an I saw another fight <gasps> on the street <gasps> in the and it, uh, some dude was like crossing crossing the road and like punched the hood of a car and then the guy in the car got out. They started arguing and then they started fighting, and the dude in the car like suplexed the guy on the ground. And this time, because I'd like dwelled on it for a re- <laughs> for a long time about how I was a coward and I didn't say anything, I broke up that fight. How did you do it? I just screamed as loud as I could. Hi! Hi! <laughs> and they froze. Oh, so you broke it up with your words. Well, then I went over there and like, 
uh, the I went over there, and as I went over there, the guy that was on the ground got up and ran away. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and created then the dude, a diversion. The, 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 <laughs> I the took dude, my shirt off. The dude that was punching him was like, he attacked me. You saw that, right? <laughs> and then we called the police. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So at the very least, you can scream. Yeah. That's so what you like, should do. Hey, hey, hey. Rather than like getting in there and fucking pulling people apart. Yeah. I mean, it, I think you could probably assess the situation. Like if there, if somebody's just like pounding on somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Maybe you should try to pull him off if he's, like, going to crack his skull or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's so hard because I'm not strong. Like, I feel like if the people are bigger than you, you shouldn't get in the way of the fight. I don't I think that if it really... Like if it's two I, huge I'm not, dudes going at it, what am I supposed to do? I bet there's, like, people that are trained to break up fights. But to me, anyway, it seemed like just, like breaking the concentration and like taking the air out of it a little bit yeah was yeah. enough for everybody to be like holy shit all right like yeah. i don't think any it's it seems rare that somebody's like i'm gonna punch this guy till he's dead yeah but if like <laughs> there's a, a fight happening maybe i think you can probably what if you just scream police i feel like that would scare people enough to stop mm -hmm. that's a good i mean introducing confusion and kind of <laughs> <laughs> you know diverting the attention or diffusing yeah the 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 energy right there it it can help if you're not willing to jump in i i had a cousin jeff who has gotten into a, a lot of a lot of fights oh, no jeff's not his name uh <laughs> <laughs> um, no but jorf <laughs> yeah my cousin jorf <laughs> Jor, are you right? but he's great but he can bench like 350 pounds Holy he was in shit. the army reserves for six years like he's a rough and tumble guy and he told me once because he's like 15 years older than me. I'm one of the youngest. I have 20 cousins on my dad's side, and I'm one of the youngest. Oh, my and, God. And I loved I loved playing sports with all my older cousins, and they kind of treated me as this little, like, you know, this little, I don't know, mascot almost. Where they're like, <laughs> well, protect the mascot. You know? <laughs> and and he gave me advice. He's like, look, I would work out in his garage. And uh, and he'd, he said – he started talking. He's like, you know, you ever get in any fights? And I'm like, no, nah, not really. I'm not really that kind of guy. He's like, all right, well, here's some advice for you. Um, never fight a dude bigger than you. Odds are you're going to lose. That that goes for me. And he's like 6'3", you know, 275 or whatever. And uh, and he's like, and then if you do have to get in a fight with someone that's bigger than you or, or, uh, or you know, someone that you think is going to kick your ass, if you can, and this is a dude who has a ton of like, I guess integrity for fighting. I, I don't know. <laughs> Question mark. Yeah, it's, there should be no honor among thieves, right? <laughs> right. This but he, like, if you're down to fight, then you could like claw and stab and bite and whatever. Well, this, this was his point. He's like, kick someone in the nuts with the with the toe of your foot. <laughs> it will destroy them, <laughs> and it will at least take the air out of them, and for long enough for you to get the hell out of there. The toe of your foot. And then the last thing was, he was like, never fight a wrestler ever. Never fight a wrestler. Because they know how to beat you up. Because they can get you on the ground and just like <laughs> annihilate you. I would, if I was fighting somebody, I'd be so scared to kick them in the nuts because I, it feels like there would be a, ch like, you, there's a chance you miss, right? Yeah. You catch their thigh or they like block it somehow. And then like, you, and then that's just, they are an enraged bull. Especially if, you, if they catch your foot yeah. and they're like, what are you doing? And You're going to you, kick my fucking ball. <laughs> they can break your leg. Uh, the, the inverse of the advice he gave you is kick smaller people in the balls that's what he told you to do wow and all this time i've been i've been inverting it <laughs> but yeah that is what he said find a smaller person and kick them in the balls and i said uh-huh uh-huh uh -huh. <laughs> fucking jeff was the man man uh all right that's what we would have done in that situation uh let's take a break thank a few more peeps we'll be back with more tim baltz right after these thank you squarespace for sponsoring this episode of our show we love you. Uh, you know, you can make your next move and your next website with Squarespace. You can do both. At the same time. At the same time. You can create a beautiful website or an online store with any award-winning template. Uh, basically, the templates are the most beautiful way to present your ideas online. Tell me, Moss. Well, you don't have to learn how to program, design, code. All that stuff is all contained within Squarespace's all-in-one platform. So there's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. Moss, more tell me. Uh, they got 24-7 customer support, uh, award-winning customer service, and a unique domain experience that's fully transparent and simple to set up. Tell Moss more to me that tell me. Uh, <laughs> if, if you want uh, an idea for a free domain name, here we go. We, we tell you guys uh, two available domains every time. Squarespace endorses an episode. That is correct. So for you guys, for free, I shouldn't say for free, for available right now, 
notglad.com. That's a different way of saying sad. That's right. I'm not glad.com. And that's actually perfect if your name isn't glad. Exactly. Not glad.com. Uh, mine is trymyjeans.com. Huh? Hey, if you're not glad, try my jeans. <laughs> so it's for somebody to try your pants on? Not my pants. Dot com. My jeans. Uh, you can start your free trial today at squarespace.com and enter offer code if I were you to get 10% off your first purchase. So if you ever have the need to build a website for yourself or a loved one, uh, a wide range of creative people and businesses, musicians, designers, artists already trust Squarespace and you should too. Just go to squarespace.com and enter offer code if I were you to get 10% off your first purchase. Dope. All right, we're back with Tim, but actually, first, real quick, uh, we got to shout out the Citizenry uh, raffle winner. Oh, shoot. Who won? Yes, the the winner of the Citizenry Palermo Tripolina chair. Please be me. Is none other than it's not you. Okay. Yep, it is actually... An alias I made to win the contest. Yes, if your alias was Christine Harrison. It wasn't. Sorry, but... <laughs> That's a real other human, and that's a gut punch. Yeah. But I guess I'm happy for her. a gut punch. That is a gut. That is an ass slap. Uh, So she won the citizenry raffle? She won the citizenry raffle. uh, But don't fear, because there's still some citizenry goodness. Uh, You guys can check out their stuff, which, as we said, is handmade, local artisans. uh, Just some real tasteful, tasteful shit to upgrade your places. Uh, And you can go... Buy anything you want there and use the coupon code if I were you hmm. at checkout for free premium shipping. That's not bad. That's what's up. I ain't mad. I ain't mad. So what's the URL? Uh the URL is the citizenry.com. Uh the dash citizenry.com and the coupon code is if I were you. Uh upgrade your home decor game, everybody. And thanks yeah. to Christine for winning our first chair raffle. Go get that chair, baby. Tim, Shrink, March 16th. Yes, on CISO, which is available on Apple TV. You can get it through Amazon, uh, I think Google Chromecast. or I, we, we, ran, <laughs> we ran ads for CISO, so I believe if you don't have CISO, there, there's a great chance you can use promo code if I were you to get two free months of CISO. That would be great. To watch this show. All, yeah. all eight episodes of Shrink land at the same time, March oh, that's 16th. Exciting. And there so, are full episodes, 22 minutes? 25 to 30 minutes, actually. Whoa. Damn. Yeah, yeah. So what's the plan? To make more? To, to... Hopefully. I mean, it'd be great to have another season, you know? Uh, obviously, like, it hasn't even come out yet, so we got to wait and see. But CISO was very happy. We, we were very happy with what happened. We filmed it in Chicago in September and October. Um, used a lot of uh, great people from, from Chicago, Chicago people that live here, L.A. people that we know and love. Uh, Mary Holland is in it. Yeah. Oh, man, um, she's so funny. Yeah, she's great. Some, some great people, John Lutz, Tammy Sager, um, Greg Holloman from Strangers with Candy, TJ and Dave, the legendary improv duo. They play different parts in it. Uh, Joel Murray plays my stepdad. Megan Fay, who's in Transparent, who's actually from my hometown of Joliet, Illinois. Wow. Yeah. Double Joliet reference. Yeah, and I'd never met her before. Um, wow. She plays my mom. Uh, some great, great people are in it. And great you play people. a shrink. Analyzing I play a, people. a shrink. The, the quick byline is basically my character graduates from medical school, does not get accepted into a, a teaching hospital, a uh-huh. university hospital, which is what doctors have to do. Of course. So he's over half a million dollars in debt. Mm-hmm. Um, he's about to lose his medical license. And in the state of Illinois, you can become a clinical therapist if you register 1,920 supervised hours of clinical therapy. Is that true? Yes. Okay. So he basically defaults to doing that. <laughs> he starts doing, and you can't charge them, and you have to get it supervised. Okay. <laughs> so he starts doing free therapy in his parents' garage because he's been forced to move back home. And then he seeks out uh, a supervising <clears throat> therapist to sign off on his hours. So the thrust. Do they have to sit in the room? No, super- they. Oh. But he records everything. I see. So they listen. Um, so that the you know the thrust of the season of the eight episodes is him getting a supervising therapist to sign off on this, slowly getting better, you know, b- being pretty bad at it at times, and navigating kind of his post medical school life with the fact that he's this much in debt. He has to get a part time job. 
Um, he has to log, you know, like eight hours of this stuff a day without charging. Yeah, it's like anymore. a full time job without getting paid. Yeah, yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. It's great, and it uses a ton of improv um, with some great improvisers. And uh, oh, Joey Romaine, who was in Oh in Fancy, man. yeah. <laughs> he's a he's a force of nature. Yeah, he's in a bunch of episodes. He's oh, he's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I love Joey. Uh, really sweet, we can check it out. I'm gonna check it out starting March 16th. You said it's March 16th. Hell yeah! Actually, we're gonna be in Australia when that comes out. Really? Have you ever been to Australia? I never have. We're doing shows in Melbourne and Sydney on March 16th and 18th. Uh, live versions of this podcast. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah. And then we're in South by Southwest. Or we're in Austin the weekend before. We have a whole HeadGum live show on Saturday, March 11th. So you go to Austin to Australia. That's right. Yeah, That's the name of our next dude, Austin, Australia. Alphabetical order, baby. Yeah. Austria's <laughs> next. Austria's got to be next. <laughs> That's great. You guys, Australia loves you, right? Uh, for so. whatever reason, we have a lot of fans in Australia. They're listening right now? They have to be. They yeah. better be. They damn well better be. Uh, and we'll see you guys there. Tickets are still available at jakeandamir.com. Are you going to South by this year? I'm not. Awesome. Yeah. We'll see you there. <laughs> That's Austin, dude. Wait, no, because South... No, no, no. I have to, I have to do press stru- uh, stuff for Shrink. I'm going back to Chicago to do some stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, all right. Do you want to answer some more cues? Yeah. So this is a female's name. Our first female name that we need from you. Ooh. All right. Um, how about... Jessica Adams. <laughs> Even your female names have a male name in them. <laughs> Are these supposed to be... I'm not supposed to be like, you know... It could people be like, Jessica Lantern. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> oh, that's really that? funny. Let's do that. All okay, right. Pretend I ask you for the first time. All right, all right. Let, can we get a name for this female? <laughs> Jessica Adams. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Adams, oh, shit, writes, <laughs> I uh, have this gal pal. We'll call her Cheese. <laughs> See, she is good. She yeah, is. nice. She recently decided she's ready for her first tattoo. She wants to branch. She wants a branch with little break-off branches that represent important things in her life: her husband, her two dogs, etc. The thing is, she said she wants one of the branch-off branches that represents me. Overall, cool tattoo. Sure, sweet. Of course, good idea. Absolutely not. I can't handle the commitment of having a lifelong friend. I definitely can't handle the commitment of being represented on somebody else's body for the rest of their life. Don't get me wrong. I love tattoos. I have a few shitty ones on my own body, but they don't represent shit, and it's my body. What if we break up and she just has this reminder of me on her body for the rest of her life? Do I just assume she won't relate the obscure branch to me if we break up? Do I seize the cheese, shake her, and tell her it's a bad idea, coming off as a shitty person because I'm assuming our friendship won't last? Do I get a matching tattoo to make it seem like I have faith in the friendship? How do I snake and weasel myself out of this like a cow would? Uh, deepish pull from a Jake and Amir episode. Uh, help, help me, Jake and Amir. Uh, 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 you're my only hope, but I'd like your input. Extra info. We've known each other for two and a half years. She's 28. I'm 23. She's married. I'm single. I'm a Gemini. We're both right-handed females. She's She's a Gemini. Is the other girl a Virgo? You know what? It doesn't say, but probably. She's either a Virgo or a Sagittarius. Absolutely. you know (laughs) that this girl that wrote in is a Leo. (laughs) Forever and for always. Uh, (laughs) Jessica Adams. Oh, shit. Uh, hmm, What a whirlwind. What a whirlwind. Wow. Uh, Quick thoughts, impressions? I mean, my first thought initially was let Cheese do what she's got to do, whatever. Mm -hmm. But then... You, one of them's 28 and married, and the other is 23? Yeah. That that was the one that threw me, where I thought, okay, you are still you are still in a phase of your life where you're kind of creating lifelong friendships, but you're not committing to them. <laughs> uh-huh. you're, in, you're in a weird, like, post-high school or college phase where, you know, your friends are in flux, kind of. You yeah. still have your good friends from home mm-hmm. and maybe some college friends, but it sounds like this girl is their neither. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this girl is, I guess, a BFF for now. Right. 21 to 23. 28 to 23. No, I'm saying she, they've been friends for two years. So this girl uh, became yeah, friends yeah. with her when she was 21. Right, right, right. But did she did she stand up at her wedding? You, you know? know, it doesn't say. Because if she didn't. But we do know what hand is their dominant hand. So right. They're good. both right-handed. Right. Yeah. 
Does that do anything? Nope. Thoughts? <laughs> How does that affect uh, this? I was going to say something, but now I just realized one of them is not left-handed. So shit. scratch that. Uh, who cares, I think, if somebody got a tattoo of... Not only of not of me, but of something that represented me, and not She's even probably something that really represents it. you. It's only a branch on a greater tattoo. Yeah, it's part of her tattoo. She says will represent you, whether it does or not doesn't matter. It almost sounds like it's something that she said to like placate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, one of the branches is a uh, like a branch you. for my dog and my husband <laughs> and uh, and you. Yeah, <laughs> girl, I gotta put a stop to this. And then this girl has shitty tattoos herself. And this other tattoo doesn't even seem shitty. So I don't know what moral ground she's standing it's on. It's funny that she's like, I have shitty tattoos, but they're on my body. <laughs> well, these, this one will be on her body. I think the worst bit of advice I've ever heard is, should I get a matching tattoo? Yeah. Obviously, that would dig a deeper hole for That's you to climb out That's certainly the of. wrong answer. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. Just let it happen. Look, tattoos are always, you know, they represent a time in your life. And so they evolve as you get older. So if that branch becomes less meaningful later, cool, that's life. (laughs) If it gets more meaningful or it stays the same, that's life too. Whatever. My butterfly tattoo is case in point. Uh, It's not quite as... uh... (laughs) It's not quite a case and it doesn't have a point. (laughs) (laughs) But you know what? It's fine and I'm not mad at anybody aside from myself (laughs) for getting it. Do you have one? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. you don't uh, have any. For anybody listening, I'm spreading my ass all the time. <laughs> nice. It's a beautiful colored in butterfly. And I, I see how the uh, the butterfly's big open mouth is your butthole. <laughs> yeah. And it, oh, here comes the caterpillar. It's hungry. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Oh, no. The caterpillar's coming out. Oh, good well, Lord. A lot of little larvae. Yeah. Right, and they are enough. just squirming it off. I didn't mean to open this Pandora's box. Oh, and it is a Pandora's box. And it is open. <laughs> Uh, Tim, you don't have any tattoos. I mean, look at you, man. You're clean cut and just right. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> would you ever get a tat? Probably not. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I would. You so know. I thought you had a chess piece. <laughs> <laughs> Chosen one. <laughs> Chosen one. <laughs> yeah, I got Delante West's face on my back. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> um, Fucking LeBron's mom on my chest, <laughs> on my back. So he's fucking the mom on your chest. That's a tattoo on your back. <laughs> you a tattoo of your chest on your back. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't rule it out. I haven't had anything uh, propel me to do it. Probably because I've, you know, for most of my life, I felt like, nah, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I like the idea of a, a clean body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you shower, man? Uh, in the mornings. <laughs> <laughs> I get that oatmeal. I get that shower in. I am feeling a good for the shower. day. <laughs> I wouldn't rule it out, but it would have to be pretty significant. Yeah. You know? Have you ruled out getting a tattoo? Uh, I mean, I haven't made a rule because I don't even think about it ever. So I would say probably not a tattoo. I would say 95%. No, what higher. You, what five percent? What? Yeah, like what? Do you, what's the scenario? Can you even invent one in your head where you would get a tattoo? Drunken, uh, packed between many friends on the best day of our lives after we've agreed to do something insane. Uh, if something even better happened, I see. <laughs> I oh, okay. <laughs> oh, we can make that happen. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying. I'm I'll like, you the, in the, Vegas. the wheels are turning. I want to get you a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if we're in Vegas and my buddy puts a hundred thousand dollars on a roulette spin and it hits, we all promise to get a little dollar sign on our ass that no one will ever see. <laughs> all right, fine. Let's go for it. I want you to be that ass. <laughs> I want your ass on my ass. Uh, before we left, I wanted to explain the daddy joke just because it was so funny. Do you oh, remember yeah. the origin of the daddy joke? Oh, I do. You do? Yeah. Oh, thank God. All right. So we're eating lunch it was, while shooting, right? Yeah, it was when we were shooting the pilot. For whatever reason, I like, I I made some kind of joke like to the PAs or something like, cause they were calling, you know, they're like, everybody's on walkie talkies and stuff. And I, so I was like, I want my, like my nickname on set's going to be daddy. So I'd be like, all right, dad, like daddy's flying in. Like daddy's yeah, when be like, where's Jake, uh, Jake's in makeup or whatever. Like, no, like daddy's in wardrobe. Daddy's like, daddy's coming in. Yeah. Uh, you're, when you're in the bathroom, they say the code for the bathroom is 10 one. It's like daddy's 10 one. 
Uh, anyway, it didn't stick uh, <laughs> with anybody except for Tim. <laughs> but you would say it like at the least opportune, least cool oh, time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So like I remember eating it was, lunch. It was never like, uh, oh, way to go, daddy. You yeah. nailed that take. <laughs> It was. <laughs> I, I, I think during one, lunch is the first one. One day, one day at lunch, uh, I like didn't I didn't like the lunch or something, <laughs> and I was like, "Where we like why do we get it from here or whatever?" Uh, and nobody's really responding. And then Tim is like, "I find the meat to be a little dry too, Daddy." <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that at all. I'm, I'm sorry about your failed lunch plans, Daddy. <laughs> yeah. It was always something like that. It's something just like so lame and sad. And like, <laughs> I do remember that. What was What's great is that if I don't see you for like, you know, three or four months and I see you and that's the first thing out of my mouth and it feels like you've forgotten about it. <laughs> But I definitely have it. Oh, uh, no. Man, I forgot man. about your origin, but God, no. It does crack <laughs> Hi, <me> Daddy. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. <laughs> oh, hello, Daddy. Do you mind if I get a soda from the fridge, Daddy? <laughs> do you remember when Rick Fox cheated in beer pong against us, Daddy? Because yeah. I fucking do. <laughs> did he really cheat? Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> against me and you? Or against you and somebody else? No, who was it? Oh... Uh... It was me and somebody. We were, I mean, we were all playing in and out. I don't know. It wasn't George Basil, was it? No. No, but it was somebody. How did he and cheat? He, uh, so I bounced one in on him. And that it should have been two cups. It, it was two cups. I bounced one in and he was like, he was like, oh, it's never going to happen again. I was distracted. And then um, someone pretended to throw one. I threw one and it would have it would have landed and ended the game in the in the first cup, uh-huh. and he swatted it away thinking that it was a bounce or something like that. <laughs> and he was like, "Oh no, no, I thought it was a bounce." And I'm like, "That was going in." <laughs> he's like, "Well, we can't prove it." And I mean, I was I've rarely ever been this sure of a ping pong ball. Going You're about to a... Doug Christie punch him in the chin. <laughs> Whoa. What did he go on to win? Yes, of course. <laughs> Fox. Fox never loses. That's you know hot, that. Man. Uh, tough pill. That's a tough pill to swallow, man. Sometimes you got to swallow that pill, Daddy. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> uh, all right. Any last things to plug before we head out? Uh, no, check out Shrink. So March 16th on CISO, but then it also comes out, the pilot comes out March 9th on Amazon. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, and, you know, you go to CISO TV and they'll they'll have uh, clips in the next couple weeks. Sweet. Yeah, you know, anybody, I think the CISO ads that we ran were like maybe within the last two months. Yeah, so, so try the... signed up, maybe they might even still have it when Shrink comes out. Yeah, and yeah. If, if you haven't yet, I think you, I think there's a great chance it's still available. Uh, the promo code that is If I Were You Show. Uh, which is when you're checking out and it gives you two free months. Cool. Uh, thanks for coming by, finally. I know, man. Gracias. Thank you, guys. Thanks to all those emailers. Yeah, it's like it's, <laughs> been, it's been so long, and here we are again. <laughs> right. Uh, if you have your own questions or your own theme song submissions, that email address for everything is if I were you show at gmail.com. The opening theme song was written by, do you guys remember his name? Uh, Bryce. Bryce uh, Linus. Yeah, nice. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. And then Good this Lord, I was never going to get it. Closing one is by somebody named Jeff or Jeffrey. Uh, and he's got a jazzy little ditty for us. Jeff or Jeffrey? Uh, let me put it on my oh, computer. My, there, that I'm was like that. A, a guy's. Oh no, it was another dude's name. Josh No Joshua. Yeah, this is a, a different a different guy. Jeff No Jeffrey. No, that's not his actual name. I'll get it. You're right. Makes I sense. Should, I should give him that. Okay. Stage Gotta name is the dance. last. The stage name is the last true American hero, and his oh, name yeah. is Joseph Drevitz from Portland. Do you know? Him? We've played one of his songs before. Oh really? Awesome. Nice. This one was great, but a little too long, so we I decided to end the episode with it. So thanks, Joseph. Thanks, uh, Bryce. Thanks, yeah. Tim. Hey, thanks, Amir. Thanks, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next week. Later, guys. If I were you, for Jake and Amir. If I were you, I would be wearing those shoes. I'd marry Susie Lou Cause she's not like those other girls you're into If I were you I'd drive your Lamborghini real fast Pick up Tracy Chapman 
we'd have a blast And we never go back If I were you I'd save my money And I'd spend it on cocaine And hookers like you're prone to do And if I were you I'd call my mom And tell her I love you Call my dad and tell him Thank you for paying for my extravagant lifestyle Even though I'm 22 And if I were you I'd buy my friend Joe Some sweet cake And maybe tickets to go see the next If I were you for Jake and Amir That was a HeadGum Podcast.